As 2021 begins, President Muhammadu Buhari has something to say to Nigerians as regarding security, economy, and anti-corruption fight. And People's Democratic Party describes President's speech, says it is empty and directionless. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayode Ladeide. So the first issue of the day, in a bid to welcome Nigerians into the new year 2021, President Muhammadu Buhari gave a nationwide address earlier on the first day of the year. In his speech, he admitted that 2020 was a tough year and highlighted how the nation journeyed the storming waters. He also restated his commitment to implementing the five demands made by youth during the hashtag NSAS protest that swept across the country in the month of October the same year, I mean last year. Joining us to discuss this is the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Public Affairs, Ajuri Ingilali. Good evening, Ingilali. Good evening, Ajuri. Okay, let me, let me uh, start by saying that um, the president, you know, uh, actually had a targeted discussion with Nigerians this morning where he highlighted the three, you know, what we always call the tripod. And I saw a new dimension to it with a new acronym, C, that is S-E-A, that refers to security, economy, and anti-corruption fight. Let's start with security. Um, do you really think uh, this will go a long way in assuaging some nerves that feel that uh, we are beginning to return to those horrible days where it was insecurity everywhere? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Coyote. Let me just uh, start uh, from saying uh, that, you know, when you look at this uh, address uh, this morning by President Mohamedou Buhari, what you saw uh, was the commander in chief of the armed forces, uh, the president of the country, and indeed the father of the nation, uh, reaching out uh, to all people, uh, all Nigerians, of all political persuasions, uh, of all, uh, you know, diverse uh, affinities and affiliations. And I think a big part of uh, understanding uh, the, 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 the power of the speech and the power of what of the content of the speech and not just the delivery uh, is understanding that uh, we are at a point where we understand, uh, I'm talking of the, the country now, I think has a better appreciation of the fact that we're not going to be able to have the success we seek uh, in the areas of security, uh, of course, economic development and the anti-corruption war, unless uh, we confront it in a united fashion. Uh, and you saw the president really reaching out in that regard. Now, as to your question about uh, security, uh, I, I think you'd really have to, you know, assess it relative to where we were. And that's why the president uh, was very clear uh, about uh, making a clear contrast uh, concerning what we adopted in 2015, what we inherited, the situation we inherited, uh, and what we have currently. There's no doubt uh, that we are not yet where we want to be uh, in, in terms of the, the fight against terror, uh, the fight against bandits, the fight against criminal elements in the country. But I think any person uh, making, trying to make the case uh, that we are worse off now than we were uh, in 2015, before President Mohamedou Buhari took office, uh, it's just being insincere in, in two forms. Number one, if you look at the raw data, just sheer data, taking emotion and sentiment out of it now, just the data in terms of casualties, there's no doubt about the fact uh, that casualties have reduced around the country as it relates to the, uh, you know, the, the impact of terror uh, on the nation's security. But secondly, I think there's also the larger issue of, uh, if you recall, I was in the newsroom uh, between uh, 2011 and 2015, 
when every other weekend we had a mosque exploding in Kano, you would have one weekend where it would be 120 dead and one bombing in a mosque. It would be 200 dead. At one go, in Kano, for example, we had bombings in Kaduna. One which was even targeted at assassinating uh, President Mohamed Buhari even before he took office. And I think Nigerians remember that, not to speak of the several bombs uh, that went off in the nation's capital of Abuja, right? Not, none of that has transpired even okay. a single time uh, it, it, since Mr. President took office. And I think that that's a sign okay. of progress. Uh, again, I we're not yet where we want to be. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm coming back to that. Uh, but sorry, we just want to quickly listen to uh, the president for those people who didn't probably wake up on time. Let's just get a snippet of some of the things the president said, and I will come back to you. Please take a listen. Remember that we also celebrate the historic occasion of our 60 years as an independent and sovereign country on October 1st, 2020. In the spirit of hope and gratitude, I would like to remind us again that as a country on the difficult journey to nationhood and greatness, we have confounded the many pundits at home and around the world who never gave the newly born country that emerged into the world stage on the 1st of October 1960 a chance of surviving much longer than a few years. Yet, here we are, 61 years by the next anniversary in October. 2020 indeed came with a lot of challenges ranging from security and economic issues across the regions to understandable protests that were mainly led by youth and served notice to the demand for police reforms and accountability. This government had, this government listened, and this government is committed to fulfilling the five demands of our youth, fully understanding that we all wish well for Nigeria. I wish to also use this occasion of New Year to reaffirm my commitment to the people of Nigeria. Especially okay, that was just part of the things that the president spoke to us about. And uh, probably for a lot of people who felt, oh, the president didn't speak much about the Lekki issue then. And he was able to also come in to remind us that he's committed to fulfilling those five demands. Uh, bring us up to speed, you know. I think you probably will speak more to the young people who felt oh, maybe the protest wasn't successful, maybe the government didn't listen to them. Tell us more on the process of fulfilling these demands. Thank you very much, uh, Kyle. Uh, really starting from the, the fact of the president's remarks were very, very clear uh, this morning uh, in, in stating uh, and affirming and recognizing uh, the legitimacy uh, of the NSAS protests. Uh, really affirming uh, the justification and legitimacy of the cause of our young people as they went out across the country uh, to register their dis dissatisfaction uh, with uh, what has been a lack of accountability uh, and an insufficient level uh, of, of standard in terms of the conduct of police officials. Uh, this was affirmed and recognized this morning by the President Mohamedou Buhari, the same way that it was recognized openly by the President very early on uh, during the protest, when he openly said that uh, our young people have, have a, a great cause uh, to be offended, a great cause uh, to feel uh, that injustices have been done, and great cause uh, to interact with government to ensure that uh, these injustices are dealt with once and for all. So this was not a new position, just an affirmation. Uh, of that. Now, it's one thing to publicly affirm uh, and attest to the legitimacy of those uh, of, of the cause of the NSAS protests. It's another thing, however, to obviously fulfill the demands uh, that were made uh, by the NSAS protesters, which is why the president uh, went a step beyond this morning uh, to state uh, unequivocally that all five demands of the protest movement 
uh, have not only been agreed to, but they are being met and they're being fully implemented. And to be very precise in what we're talking about, you're looking at, of course, uh, the release of all detained protesters, which was done very early on. Uh, you're looking at the establishment of uh, judicial panels of inquiry, for example, across the country, which our people have already seen uh, and they're already participating in. It's not something that uh, is grammar okay. or, or, or propaganda. Uh, our NGOs across the country are engaging with these panels. Uh, we have uh, young people who have been negatively impacted one way or another who are engaging with these panels. Uh, and justice is being done. We're seeing uh, officers not just being removed from the force, but are being recommended uh, for uh, prosecution. Uh, okay. That's all part of the process. And also, if you look at the, the enactment uh, of, of obviously the police trust fund and what that's going to mean in terms of the enhancement of police welfare, uh, enhanced equipment, enhanced training practices, and of course, enhanced funding. Uh, a, a major demand of our pro of the I'm sorry, as protesters was that salaries and benefits would be increased for our police officials so that they are not uh, dipping their hands or, or, or should I say okay. compromising their standards uh, in pursuit of uh, economic freedom. Okay, uh, Ajuri, so major... Ajuri, you know this is necessary. We, we have to do this regularly because, uh, trust me, you, you are never tired of talking. But let's look at some area that I think you would love to talk more about, the economy. As we speak, um, I remember the Minister of Transportation always emphasizing that come January, there is going to be a commissioning of this railway. And sometimes each time we go through the roads and we see these heavy tankers, we're waiting for when this railway will be commissioned. How will this assuage some of these concerns being raised by a lot of people? In terms of railway. Uh, dear brother, thank you very much. Uh, understand, I, I speak only when I'm invited to speak. And you, of course, have invited me to speak. And it's my honor and privilege and duty to speak. Um, so I'm going to finish the last point I was making before I go into answering this uh, next question you've asked, which is just very quickly. The president, and I think I, this is a very important point for all Nigerians to understand. The president has uh, approved, obviously, within the 2021 budget that he signed into law yesterday in sustenance of the January to December budget cycle uh, that we began with in the, in the, the collaboration we have with the Ninth National Assembly, uh, has already taken into account the enhancement of recurrent expenditure in the police force and the armed forces to take into account the increased salaries that we will be from this budget cycle be paying uh, to our police officers uh, as, 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 a, as a direct answer to the, le the legitimate demand of the NSAS protesters. So it's not just by words, but by action. It's already in the budget, and we will be paying those enhanced salaries to our police officers as demanded uh, by the protesters. Now, you asked about the uh, issue of the uh, Lagos Ibadan uh, rail line. I believe that's the rail yeah, line exactly. you were referring to. Uh, yes. So, of course, that has already, uh, we've already seen that has already started. Uh, what we have, have been very open with our people about is the president did approve. Uh, the extension, the expansion of the existing, uh, you know, kind of blueprint of that project in such a way that it would now go from uh, Iju uh, in Lagos uh, into Apapa port so that we can decongest Apapa port and be, uh, be in a position uh, to decongest Apapa port via uh, taking containers on the rail line, on the high speed uh, standard gauge rail line out of Abuda, out of Lagos into Abeokuta, and then, of course, uh, in, uh, in Ibadan, where we are building an inland dry port that can store uh, the containers that would have been congesting uh, Apapa port. So that extension into Apapa port is just about to be concluded. Uh, we are, we're expecting that to be done uh, by, uh, by, by next month or at the end of this month, thereabout. Uh, and when the, once that is done, that will be commissioned. But in terms of the rail line itself, it's already being operated. Our people are already enjoying the benefits. Uh, and we'll continue to, uh, to push forward with the expansion of the rail line from Ibado uh, to Kano, passing through uh, southwestern capitals into Ilorin, Aquara State, into Minav, Niger State, linking up with Kaduna, that will now link upwards to Kano uh, and downwards to Abuja. Okay, let's quickly look at two points, if you can marry the two together. One of the first one has to do with diversification. This is a language that we keep hearing, and we don't know how practicable this is. Because um, as we speak, I remember that this government was doing so well in terms of rice production, 
but I don't know what is happening now. Now that the borders have also been open, are we going to be having, you know, going back to what it used to be? Or there is a proper measure in place now not to allow us going back to, pardon my language now, to our ugly past. Thank you very much. Uh, so this is a great question because I've heard some analysis in the public domain suggesting that the president's uh, opening of the border uh, is somehow an admission. Uh, it's being uh, regarded as an admission that the original decision to shut the border was a mistake. Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to unequivocally uh, address uh, that. Uh, first of all, uh, the, we saw uh, in August 2019, when President Mohamedou Buhari took that uh, very courageous decision to shut the border, which no other president had been willing to do, uh, to really shut down the workings of a multi-billion dollar uh, illicit smuggling cartel uh, that had been importing items at, at much cheaper rates through uh, Benin Republic's border, paying duties to that government and other governments for them to smuggle the goods across the border into Nigeria at the expense and detriment uh, of our local producers and manufacturers. By shutting it down, we saw the next month, September 2019 and on, we saw a near doubling of our revenues at the ports. The customs service was able to report double revenues. Uh, that was obviously that obviously became a very critical component of, of funding uh, the various interventions we put in place uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, which of course none of us would have anticipated in August 2019 when that original decision was taken. So we're very happy uh, with the results of that decision. And the and the issue about how and how, why we are uh, now opening the border is really about the fact that we have been able to engage over this period of time in direct negotiations and consultations uh, with our neighbors. Uh, and obviously, we are now contented uh, with the uh, mechanisms that have been put in place by all parties to ensure uh, that the uh, multi-billion dollar uh, smuggling cartel that was operating uh, is now being checked. Uh, particularly at a time when we are now moving into the implementation phase of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, you will agree with me that the symbolism, that the message that we sent to the rest of the African continent, that Nigeria is no longer your dumping ground, where you're going to dump your finished products at the expense of our, uh, 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 taking advantage of our market, at the expense of our local producers and manufacturers, that those days are over. And I think, my brother, if you look at the response of the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, the uh, Nigerian Employers Consultative Association, and other major associations, you will agree with me that all of them uh, publicly hailed the president's decision because they know that it is it, it is a primary reason why we have seen a revival of Nigerian manufacturing and Nigerian production and processing across value chains from agriculture uh, to, to other sectors. Okay, let's quickly look at, uh, we're trying to do more like a scorecard of uh, what, that, what this administration has done in 2020. Um, you remember the back and forth of the 774,000 jobs that was meant to last for three months. Uh, at the time, we were a bit lost. Maybe it was a problem of uh, not being carried along to see how this thing has translated to jobs for people. What exactly happened to that? And uh, part of the things the president also said is to boost job creation in the economy. Uh, I, 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 if you ask uh, average people, I think we are yet to see that as we speak, or there is an obvious excuse of a pandemic, or what exactly is going on on that? Th thank you very much. First of all, there's absolutely no excuse. Uh, we are that. not interested in excuses uh, or, or, or anything of that nature. Uh, the fact of the matter is that program that you cited is the Special Public Works Program. That program has not started. So I want to be clear about that. That program has not yet started. Uh, it's starting by the end of this month. Uh, and basically what has happened is this program required the direct uh, cooperation of state governments. Fortunately for us, about 33 or 34 out of the six to 36 state governments uh, have been fantastic in their, uh, in their uh, uh, readiness to cooperate uh, in the implementation of that program. But you have one or two states. Uh, you know, I'm from a state called River State. Uh, so I have an idea of what I'm referring to when I say that you have one or two states uh, that like to play politics with developmental issues and have taken it as a political calculation uh, that even those programs that will benefit their, their people in those domains, uh, that they'd rather turn, the other, uh, turn a blind eye to them 
uh, for the sake of maintaining a narrative that the federal government doesn't care about those particular uh, states. So that's, a, that's one of the issues. But on the large whole, on the larger uh, effort, uh, things are already in place. Uh, the, the, uh, the recruits that have been enumerated already have established their bank accounts. Those who have not had before have registered for their BBN, and those who have had have it in place. So uh, from the end of this month, we will be mobilizing them out to the various sites, which we have already located across the country. Uh, just for to be clear, those who may not know how the program works, we're recruiting 1,000 young people uh, from every local government area of the Federation uh, to engage directly in the national development process by identifying strategic roads that link uh, very critical farms to critical markets, that link critical industries to critical ports, for example, and they are going to be using Nigerian-made raw, ma uh, raw materials, uh, Nigerian-sourced bitumen, etc., to be constructing and reconstructing these roads uh, as part of the larger uh, national and economic development blueprint of the country. So to answer your question, by the end of this month, we would have mobilized our young people, but all of the architecture of the program in terms of how the digital payments will be uh, conducted, all of that has been put in place, and now it's just a matter of mobilization. Okay, uh, because of time, let's quickly talk on the third part of the C, that is the security, uh, economy, and the anti-corruption fire. The anti-corruption fire, um, the president uh, mentioned that uh, they will consolidate on the gains being achieved, and he also mentioned the major albatross that is always talking about, the judiciary. What is the level of uh, collaboration that um, the, 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 the graft agencies are enjoying now? Thank you very much. Uh, well, let me, it's a fantastic question. Let me just start from saying in 2021, in terms of uh, how we're going to reshape the laws of the land, uh, there are uh, like three or four strategic focus points for us. Uh, starting with two major ones. Uh, by the first quarter of 2021, that is by April 1st, 2021, uh, we would have passed uh, the long decades awaited petroleum industry bill. Uh, that process has been ongoing uh, in direct consultation with our international oil company partners and other partners and stakeholders. Uh, so that is finally going to be passed and signed into law by the president, hopefully by the end of the first quarter of 2021. And then the second major focus is going to be the Electoral Act Amendment, uh, which we have slated to uh, be passed and signed into law uh, by no later uh, than, uh, the, than uh, August 1st, uh, 2021. By the end of the second quarter, that should uh, be done. Sorry, July 1st. So those are the two major ones. But in addition to that, uh, there are a, a, a few major bits of legislation that we believe will uh, enhance our cooperation with the judiciary in terms of the anti-corruption war. Uh, particularly the anti-corruption courts that have been talked about uh, for quite some time. Uh, that is gaining a lot of, uh, that is gaining a lot of uh, traction as uh, we have the attention of the required uh, in, uh, stakeholders and, uh, and participants uh, making their inputs on that. Uh, we are determined to see that through before the end uh, of this uh, administration and hopefully before the end of 2021. Uh, we have the audit bill that we're working on and several other anti-corruption uh, enhancement legislations uh, that uh, I think our people uh, can really look forward to. So we have a very clear agenda for 2021 in terms of what we want to get done uh, in terms of how we're going to be able to step up the anti-corruption war. I think one major part of it is uh, obviously the, uh, the recent developments within the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Uh, you would recall uh, that within the leadership of that institution, there was a, an investigation into the conduct there. Uh, outcomes have now been uh, pre prescribed and given, uh, presented to the president for action. Uh, and okay. I believe uh, that any time you have uh, actors that may be involved, and I want to say may be involved, uh, in, 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 in wrong practice, that obviously is going to undermine uh, the, the effective workings of those critical institutions. And so we're okay. very optimistic uh, that if that, Ajuri, that has been done, we'll see more effective work from Ajuri, there. Ajuri, let me, let me just uh, touch on something I noticed that you always don't want to talk about, but I'm going to ask you. What is your response in 10, 60 seconds to what PDP described as an empty and directionless speech by the president? Your response. Oh, my dear brother, I have no issues at all, no reservations at all about talking about anything from the opposition, uh, from one of the okay. opposition political parties. Uh, obviously, that's direct from a press release uh, of an opposition political party in the country. You would never expect a situation 
uh, where uh, su such uh, an organization uh, would come out and say that the president has done well to unify the nation. He's doing so well in providing uh, social investment programs for 15 million Nigerians, which they left out in the cold despite having doubled the revenues, that they've done well uh, to enhance security because bombs okay. are not going off in cities across the country as they were when PDP was in charge. I can have that kind of conversation all day long. They know the difference, and I don't expect them to be happy with the progress that they've seen reported wow. under President Mohamed Buhari's watch. Thank you so much, Ajuri Ngelale, the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Public Affairs. Thank you for your position, and we'll hear more from PDP after this break. Thank you once again. Yeah, we'll take a short break now, and when we return, we analyze the PDP's response to the President's New Year's address. That'll be up for discussion after this short break.